G'day, Dave here, and we're looking at Psalm 9. It's really important that we look at Psalm 9. Well, it's important that we look at the Word of God because we need His perspective on what's going on. See, as we look at the world at the moment, things seem out of control. Uh, 25 million have been infected with the coronavirus. We look at the death toll. It's approaching a million people across the globe, and things haven't abated. You look at India, 80,000 cases overnight. Uh, even in our own country, we've got a little bit casual and then all of a sudden a second wave hits Victoria and the whole of Melbourne and most of Victoria is in lockdown and then it hits Sydney and there's New South Wales and then there's fighting between the states and posturing between the state governments and the Commonwealth government. And then you look at what's going on around the world and you see world leaders claiming how great they are and blaming other leaders for what's going on around about us. And the horrors of things like hurricanes in the US and, and the riots and the death toll through people killing each other in the streets. And you see uh, the explosion in Beirut and the rioting in Lebanon and the posturing of the Russians and, and even bringing out that footage about the atomic bomb from years ago that was a thousand times Hiroshima. You think, why are they doing this? And it seems like, as you look at this world, that the countries and the rulers of this world think that they've got to be in control. And it's a dangerous, dangerous uh, way of thinking. As we look at this world, what do we make of what's going on? What does it say about God? Well, I guess there are a number of different perspectives uh, on what's going on. If you were to ask a, an Eastern uh, religious view, maybe a Hindu or some form of Hinduism, they might say this is karma. We're getting what we deserve. Uh, a, a Muslim might say, well, this is the will of Allah. We just need to recognize that Allah needs to be respected and he's just doing what he's doing. Uh, there may be Buddhists who would say, well, look, our problem is that we are feeling too intensely about these things and we need to just kind of uh, be of a state of calm and accept what we're going through. And then there are atheists who really get hostile about Christians. Uh, and it's a complicated thing, isn't it, for the atheists? Because they want to say, well, your God is to blame. But of course, they don't believe in your God. And it's hard to work out what's going on. And then there are Christians, or at least religious people, who think that maybe God set things up and now he's gone and left it. And we're making a mess of everything, but he's not to blame. So what do we make of this? Well, we need the perspective of the word of God. We really do. And I want to take you to Psalm 9. And I'll just read two verses to start with from the middle. David says, The Lord reigns forever. He's established his throne for judgment. He rules the world in righteousness and judges the peoples with equity. So the question, where is God? David would say he's on the throne. The question, what's he doing? Well, David would say he's going to bring about a righteous judgment. And the question, does God care for anybody? Well, read on. It says in verse 9, The Lord is a refuge for the oppressed, a stronghold in times of trouble. Those who know your name trust in you, for you, Lord, have never forsaken those who seek you. So David would say God is all-powerful and God is loving. He's seated upon his throne and he's calling those who are oppressed, who are needy, who are struggling to come to him to find help in their time of crisis. Well, let's go back and have a browse through this psalm fairly quickly. It's for the director of music to the tune of the death of the son, a psalm of David. David says, I will give thanks to you, Lord, with all my heart. I will tell of all your wonderful deeds. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing the praises of your name. O Most High. It is a song of praise. David writes as one who has his faith in God and God's goodness. And he sees something of how God has dealt with him in the past and how God has dealt with his enemies. Verse 3, My enemies turn back. They stumble and perish before you. For you have upheld my right and my cause, sitting enthroned as the righteous judge. You have rebuked the nations and destroyed the wicked. You have blotted out their name forever and ever. Endless ruin has overtaken my enemies. You have uprooted their cities. Even the memory of them has perished. See, David has good reason to trust that God is in control because he has seen God punishing his enemies. 
Now, the Bible tells us that we get evidence of the judgment of God here and now. God hands us over to our own wicked desires. And now we are suffering and living under the consequences of our own rebellion. And that's part of the goodness of God. He hands us over to the will of our hearts. But he doesn't leave us there without hope. No, God is the one who looks to provide refuge and the one who will not turn aside anyone who comes to him. The Lord has never forsaken those who seek him. It says there in verse 10. And so verse 11, sing the praises of the Lord enthroned in Zion. Proclaim among the nations what he has done. For he who avenges blood remembers he does not ignore the cries of the afflicted. Lord, see how my enemies persecute me. Have mercy and lift me up from the gates of death, that I may declare your praises in the gates of daughter Zion, and there rejoice in your salvation. See, David knows that it's only God's mercy, it's only God's salvation uh, that means that he's here today. And he wants to be here because he wants to continue now to offer praises to God. Do we have that mindset? Do we recognize that our lives are a gift from God? That our new life in Christ, if we're Christian, has been given to us. And so we are called to praise God among those around about us. See, as our world might criticize God for what's going on, whether or not it even believes in God, are we standing up for the name of our God? Are we declaring his goodness? Are we praising God for his salvation? Are we pointing others to our God and Saviour? He continues in verse 15. The nations have fallen into the pit that they have dug. Their feet are caught in the net that they have hidden. The Lord is known by his acts of justice. The wicked are ensnared by the work of their hands. The wicked go down to the realm of the dead, all the nations that forget God. But God will never forget the needy. The hope of the afflicted will never perish. Arise, Lord, do not let mortals triumph. Let the nations be judged in your presence. Strike them with terror, Lord. Let the nations know that they are only mortal. We need these words, don't we? Because we, we look at what's going on around about us. We look at how massive is this problem we're facing. And we look at the power and the might and the ugly arrogance of nations and rulers around our world. And we're led quite easily to despair. And yet God says he's going to bring all that to judgment. And so we can come before him in our need. We can turn to God in our struggles. David, he prays. And ultimately, David's greater son, Jesus, prays. He turns to God in his time of need. And remember Psalm 2, the nations plot, the rulers come up against God and God laughs because he's installed his son as the king. See, the one who sits upon the throne is ultimately King Jesus. He is the one who rules this world and he is the one who will bring all things to judgment and God has appointed a day when he will do that and give him proof of it by raising Jesus from the dead. And so friends, as we look at our world and this life and our circumstances, it's not that God has left us. Rather, it points to the fact that God will one day bring this to judgment. And so now we see these horrific things going on about, around about us as a warning. A warning to turn back to God in his mercy. To turn back to God while we can. And friends, let me encourage you to do that. If you've not turned to God, do that now. And if you know the love that there is of coming into the presence of God through Jesus, then declare his praise to others. Make known this great message of forgiveness and salvation and justice and mercy and hope for eternity.